I am a SCORE mentor in the Minnesota division where we have over 90 volunteers serving both Manatee and Sarasota counties. I am also on the education committee and excited to bring to you today's presentation on effective networking skills to grow your business. But first, before that, just a little bit about us here at SCORE. We are a nationwide nonprofit that is an independent part of the Small Business Administration. And then what can SCORE do for you? We can provide free mentoring and educational services such as this webinar. We can help in all stages of your business right from that first initial thought all the way up through when it is time to sell. Which I was mentioning to Andrea that I was getting ready to sell my business, got a lot of experience in that area, then didn't end up selling my business. So hopefully I'll be ready to help somebody else move that in a better direction than me. <laughs> uh, to find us, you can go to score.org backslash Minnesota, where you will find all of these services. You could request a mentor or sign up to be one. And today would not be possible if it weren't for our sponsors and community partners that we have listed here. And now it is time to introduce Andrea Nirenberg, today's presenter from the Nirenberg Consulting Group with over 30 years experience in customized executive training and business workshops. And take it away, Andrea. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. It's great to be with you all via Zoom. And I've done this webinar quite a few times. One thing I want to tell everyone up front is that I don't speak really off the slides. I don't even use slides anymore. I don't think a lot of us do. It's reality. So a lot of tips, techniques, and ideas are going to come through. If anyone has a question, you can always check in with Leola. And also after the workshop. If anyone has a question or a thought or an idea and they want some information, always follow. I always follow up. Send me an email or uh, you'll have my email at the end. Just touch base with me and I'm happy to help in any way. Okay, so we can't turn to a neighbor right near, but now, but I'm going to ask you, when you hear the word networking, what comes to mind? Often people think, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Well, guess what? Think about this later. Who do you admire in business who is a great communicator and a connector? And think about later also what has happened in your life that has resulted from networking. My tagline is the opposite of networking is not working. Every time you meet someone, you can learn from them, be a resource or give. And the key word is give. And in this workshop, what we're going to do is go through my five tips of everyday practice we do have a checklist for you when you go to, quote, an event, but most of life is serendipitous networking, anytime, anyplace, anywhere, and also things to stay connected with people and separate yourself from the others. So we can go to the next slide. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. I was using the mouse, and I'm like, what are we That's doing? Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Exactly. I always say every day there's five drivers of networking success is number one, it's I think it's gonna come up, right? Is it coming up on your slide? On yours? Oh, no. no, it's not. You know, we don't even need them if it if it doesn't come up or anything like that. I you know, but so I always say the first thing you're going to do with people is you're going to meet and connect. So if we look at the fact that everywhere you go, meet people and nurture your connections, anywhere you go, people say, well, I'm introverted. I'm the biggest introvert in the world. I'm a learned extrovert. I've been doing it over time. So something else we need to think about when we're out connecting and learning and observing people and going, whether it's to an event or just everyday life, is how do I, how do I communicate? How do I learn? Am I more introverted? Am I an extrovert? Also, do I learn more by auditory, kinesthetic, or visual? All these things come into play, and those are other workshops. But the idea is think about how you meet people. So every day, I'm a huge believer of put a smile on your face wherever you're going. Say you live wherever you live. You go to your local place uh, to get your coffee. You go to something. You go to your office. I was just telling someone yesterday, think about the fact that when you walk into the building, 
and you're connecting, just say hello, greeting. So meet people and nurture your connections and network. How do you do that? I've got some great ideas on that. I'm the huge believer of staying in touch with people. And we're going to go through that in a few minutes. But the idea is a lot of times people say, well, where do you go? We're going to talk about an event in a few minutes, but that's just a tiny little segment of networking. I say it's really serendipitous in this life. Listen and learn everywhere you go. So the idea, if you think about it, how many of us really listen? We hear, but we don't always listen. So take if you look at the word listen, in that word is the word silence. So our mind has to be silent in, all, in order to really listen to the other person. And the word ear is in there too. So you want to hear. God gave us one mouth and two ears to use in proportion, but we usually do the other. So the key thing is sit back, Listen and learn from people. And I love to say to someone, I meet them, tell me what you do or tell me more about you. People love to talk about me, myself, and I in any order. So that's key. I want to go back up to one for a minute when I say nurture your connections. People who know me, and I've been um, teaching networking skills and marketing for a lot of years. And when I moved down to Sarasota from New York City, that was been about nine and a half years ago. I still was traveling back and forth to New York and all over the world doing different projects. But then I settled in on a, another job that I now work here in Sarasota. And in my marketing position at the, the place where I work now, a wonderful store called Elysian Fields, we have two locations, I touch at least over the last five years, 3,000 people. When I say touch, connect with them. Many have become my friends, clients, and been able to refer them to other people. So the thing is, how do you stay in touch? How do you stay in touch? So things like that. Every single day, I'm a huge believer of reaching out to people. And you might be saying, well, I want to just like go to an event. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. But this is so key right now for every single person who's on this webinar. You already have a large network. We don't think of it that way, but think of the people who know you. They have to know, like, and trust you to ever do business with you. We know that. So you got to know them. You got to be able to be liked by them. We hope respect and key, but you want to be able to be trusted also. So the thing is, what do we do? Do we stay in touch? So every day when I start my day, I reach out to people and I learned this is a wonderful thing to ask people when you connect with them. What's your preferred method of communication? If you and I were going to stay in touch after this introduction or this meeting, what's the best way for me to get in touch with you? And a lot of people will say, oh, everything. No, they don't. How many times have you ever emailed someone and they call you back? Well, if, if people actually call anymore. Well, guess what? There is a generation that loves to talk on the phone, right? However, I always ask people, what's your preferred text, email, social media, you know, in the messenger section, um, what is the best way for us to then have a face-to-face -face or connect with each other? And people sometimes will tell you, well, what I do, and you'll see that later in one of your handouts, which is called my information bank, things you know about people over time. So you can nurture, stay in touch, and create that kind of thing going. I have this formula that I love so much. It's called, I started doing this years ago. It's called the 24-7-30 formula for networking. So say you meet somebody and in the first 24 hours of meeting them, what I do is I will send them a note, you know, via email or something. We always walk around. A lot of people don't even have cards anymore, but we have our phones. We put that information in. Then we look on LinkedIn, we connect with them, but don't do it too fast until you've gotten permission to link in with them. But you'll send a note to somebody. It was great to meet you, connect with you. You know, it was great. Just that. That's the whole thing. Then seven days later, then you can reach out to them by social media and say, you know what? I know we chatted and connected and everything. Would it be with your permission? Could we link in together? So something like that. Some people also, I find out, are you on social? What, what, what channel on social media are you on? They will tell you, people will tell you all kinds of things and never feel ever that you're wasting time. A lot of times people say to me, I want to meet the right people. I don't think there are any wrong people. Everyone we meet, we can learn from, give a piece of advice or thought to and be a resource. You never know. And if you go in with that, that's the best philosophy. 
30 days later after you this, the 24, 7, 30 days later, then you can reach out to them again in their preferred method of communication. And you can say, you know what? Why don't we have coffee? Or why don't we set up a Zoom? Why don't we do something so we get to know each other a little bit better? Another thing that I do, anyone who knows me knows if I'll say send three emails a day to people just to touch base. I read this. I'm always reading the Wall Street Journal or a local paper or an industry paper. What's going on in your world? Something like that. So again, I still will call people on the phone. I know sometimes people forget that. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's, it's a telephone. It's an iPhone. It, the original use for it was to speak on the phone and only 4% of us use it for a phone now. I mean, it's a computer as we know. Then I'll send texts. But the key thing that I do that I don't think many people do anymore, and I hope that a lot of you on this call will write to me and say, I do it. I am a huge believer in what I call the investment that you make by writing a short handwritten personal note. So I already have them all ready to go today. I write three a day, three a day to say thank you, touch base, anything. Even if somebody didn't hire you on a project that you were bidding for, you could still say, no, don't say thank you for not hiring me, but you could say thank you for your time and consideration. Perhaps down the road, we'll be able to stay in touch. Whatever it is, nobody does this anymore. So I always say, have your handwritten notes ready to go. Have the stamps on them. The post office is still alive and well. And then I do some fun things. Like I get all these little proppy things. This one says, you're awesome. So somebody sees this and they um, they can, they open up their card. Then they see this little awesome card. They have so many that you can use and get, you can go on Amazon or anywhere and get all these different things, little props, things that make people say, wow, that was so nice. Now, again, you're not stalking people when you do this, okay? Please just know you're reaching out to be nice. Remember when we were little, our mother said, write thank you notes to people? Well, I did. I started doing it. No one will ever beat me. I've written over 22,000, but I started, I think, when I was like 14. But I learned the secret in college, too. It was the way that I got job interviews. It was the way I got a lot of business when I was starting to market and sell. So simple. I call it your, your used to be a stamp was 49 cents. They keep going up. And I used to say your 49 cent investment plan. Now you can buy, you know, freedom stamps or whatever. They are they, forever stamps. But I do three a day. At the end of the week, it's 15. At the end of the year, it's over 750 connections. Do one a day. Do one a week you will see a major difference. And I could speak forever just on the handwritten note. People who know me know I do it every day. And guess what? It makes me feel good. And the person who receives it will be like, wow, thank you. They will remember you. What gets remembered gets rewarded. I'm not saying they're going to do business with you, but they'll say, wow, that was really nice of that person to do it. We said, listen and learn. Find ways to create advocacy for other people. Connect people with each other. One plus one equals three when I think about it because they'll remember you and you'll remember them and you've made a connection. So think about how many times you build your own brand and your business by saying, oh, you know what? I know somebody who needs your service, which is why I always, and thanks Jenny for saying thanks about the thank you notes, right? So is how many times is it that when you know people say, oh my gosh, I would have never met that person, which is why I always say to someone, you'll see this, what I call my networking circle. When I'm at an event or a meeting or anywhere and I'm talking to someone and I say, tell me more about you. Tell me about your business. Tell me about what you do because I'm learning about them. They don't care about me. Let me learn about you first because you never know you're going to, see, you, you'll be able to judge and think about, can I refer this person? And then you might say, hmm, how do I know, Leola, when I'm talking to somebody that you might want to meet? Well, I know now Leo is in the food business. As long as there's people, there's going to be lots of people eating, right? So if you're in Maine, you got to go to these stores, right? Exactly. So it's the idea to connect, connect, connect. The next one, I think if you pull the next one, it probably says follow up. Yes. After all is said and done, much more is said than done. People will never follow up. That's the other thing about the note, the call, the return, the 24-7-30 rule. People don't think you're going to follow up. 
And a lot of times people will say to me, well, I called them, I wrote to them. They never called back to me. They never got in touch. You don't know in this world that we live in, which is so crazy, we don't know what just happened in someone's life within minutes, not even not even hours, seconds. You never know. So somebody may have been in touch with you, or going to call or get in touch, and they just got news of whatever. So follow up. Remember that line, after all is said and done, much more is said than done. And don't feel that you are being a, uh, a pest. Because again, you remember Kenny Rogers? He said, know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk. You will know instinctively if you listen to your gut. And if you go with the, the pure idea that networking is people skills, it's about building relationships. And if you build positive, good relationships, you will never know where an opportunity can come from. But it's about you giving first. And a wonderful line that my wonderful father always used to say, and I know he's looking down from heaven, he was the master of networking. And he didn't even know what the word meant. He was a doctor. But everyone knew him in our little town in Illinois. He, because he was always just listening, caring, giving. And he always used to say to me, give without remembering and receive without forgetting. So just give, just give. It's if people say, well, that's my, my information. Guess what? If it's public information or your proprietary information, all my books, by the way, have been, I've seen them on, uh, in other webinars and podcasts. What do I care? I'm happy that other people took the information and ran with it. The thing is, if it's out there, it's out there. Give without remembering, receive without forgetting. So that means anything you get, remember to say thank you. It's key, key, key. And then there's one more driver. People often say to me, well, how do you stay on somebody's radar screen? Every time, and I can almost hear one of my strongest clients, I worked with her firm, was a national um, financial services firm. We traveled the, the whole country. This is years ago. And to this day, I still say in my webinars, use Google Alerts. Now, I don't know how many people are on our call right now, but when I say Google Alerts, I'm sure most of you know what that is. But there are a lot of people who don't know what Google Alerts are. If you don't and you're looking on your phone now to type it in, I call it, uh, it's a, a very much, it's a systematic integrated, um, you know, generator, but it, on anything that you want to know. So like, for example, I will put in Google Alerts very often, anything I want to know, you can, and it, Put it on a separate email. It's a Gmail, and you can you can uh, log out of that particular alert. You can keep it on. But number one, if you're in a business where you want uh, to get new clients or specific clients or have your niche, whatever it is, you need to put in there what you want keywords that it will come. You'll get an email, and I'll just give you an example. So I used to work a lot training do for, for different of the big banks around the, the country and specifically living in New York City, you know, they were all there, but they were all headquartered all over the place. Through one bank, I had connected with a man who was the head of the private bank for a very large international firm, uh, bank. Never saw him anymore because he was always traveling to the Far East all over the world. However, I knew he was email preferred. I put him on my Google Alerts, his name, and just his name and where he worked. Now that you can do that, you can do it by company, by name, anything you want to probably, you know, they'll, they'll prompt you. The reason I tell you why this is so important is I saw an article that came through on my Google Alerts that he had written how he was restructuring the private bank of, of his firm. Now, I didn't read the publication that he that it was in. It was in Financial Times, but I don't read that every day. I read the Wall Street Journal every day, but not Financial Times. However, I saw this article. I immediately sent him an email because I knew this email preferred and just said, Marlon, hope you're well. I just saw this article. Congratulations. All the best. Now, he was traveling in um, Asia. Within three hours, I get a note from him. 
He says, how did you see it? Where did you see it? And I don't say Google Alerts. That's kind of our secret, okay? However, I said Financial Times. He goes, you're kidding. I didn't even see it. And the, the editor didn't even write to me. I said, well, that happens sometimes. He said, get on my calendar. Now, here's the thing. Was he thinking of me before? No. Did I create that? Yes. It took three months to get a meeting with him. However, I stayed in the game. So stay on people's radar screens. If you go through just what we've talked about here with people in your life, in your connections, in your network, and do just these five, I guarantee everyone on this call will increase your business just as we didn't go to an event yet. We're just sitting here in our office or in our life, just doing our work. I call it your 30 minutes of power half hour of networking. So dedicate 30 minutes a day in the morning, whenever it's your best time or throughout the day to do your touches and reach out to people and connect. You never know where it's going to lead, but if you don't do it, nothing will happen. So we can go to the next page, the next slide. So networking can be, this is what I call the S factor of networking. Okay. You're like, what is she talking about? So it can be strategic and structured. That's what people really think of when they think of networking. You have to go somewhere, an event, which is why I gave you all, and I, I don't even know if you, I don't think they can see me. Can they, uh, Leola? Uh, can people yes, see probably, me? It depends. Yeah, it depends on their thumbnail, what they did off to like, so I can see you off to the right and potentially. Okay, all right. So yeah, I'm like thinking, <laughs> I don't know. We can't say, oh, good. Somebody can see me. So I'm glad. So you see my wild glasses and I'm crazy. All right. So I have for everybody a networking checklist. So you'll have it. But remember, the event is just one little segment. But go to events, go to parties, go to events. Thank you for the compliment about my glasses. <laughs> I like them too. Go, go to events, go to parties, go to industry things, and go to things where people like you might not always go. And what I mean by that is say you're a financial advisor or say, um, and you go to say, well, why would I go to an event, say, in the cosmetic industry? Well, I'll tell you a story why you can. Because one of my best friends who rose to the top of Macy's and she ran the whole thing, both the websites and everything and all the, the buying. She told me that 25 years ago at an event in New York was like a cosmetic event. She met somebody there financial advisor and that particular somebody wants to know if the slides will be sent yes we can send them and everything but more information i, I i'm going to also we will send to you afterwards another handout that everyone can have okay because that really there's so much information here but i'm telling she's still using this financial advisor who she met at a cosmetic event so go to places where you think your clients will be. So we go for that. That's, it's wild. So we'll go through the checklist in a little while, but I promise you right up front, you're not going to, I'm not going to go through word by word by word. We'd be here all day. I, I know you'd love, love that, but we got to do other things, but anyone can follow up with me because my emails should be all over that. The next one, it can also be serendipitous. This is life. Everywhere you go, anywhere you go, anywhere, anytime, any place, I mean, think about it. It's so funny because I was mentioning this to Leola before. My brother lives in uh, uh, Arizona, in Carefree, Arizona. It's beautiful out there. And he and my, and my sister-in-law were in, of all places, a Goodwill a few weeks ago. And I love Goodwill. Anyway, so he was in one. And all of a sudden, what did they find? My first book. And my first book, if you ever saw that, if you saw any of them, you can go on LinkedIn if you want to laugh. It was written a few hair colors ago, as I say, and a long time ago, actually 22 years ago. They found it there. And it was so funny. So I said to my brother and my sister, they sent it to me, you know, the picture. I immediately, what did I do? I put it on Facebook. I put it on LinkedIn. And I put it on uh, Instagram. Why did I do that? I was telling you all before. Just the connections of people from my long time in business, I have connected and reconnected with people from all over the world. And I've been following up with all of them, calls, emails, touch base. It's wonderful to do that because what I just found out two days ago, someone I used to do some referral work for how now has a new 
and he's wonderful in the um, headhunting business, only for high for tech work and sales. We're going to connect on something that we're going to be working on. So again, just put it out there. If you have a prop, or if you have a uh, what, your book, or your whatever you sell, or you market, or your business, whatever it is, be open to giving it away, putting it out there, and marketing and prom promoting in a positive way, not self-promotion other people will promote you but do it in a funny way like i put when i wrote it on facebook and everything i said i finally arrived after all these years my book was spotted in a goodwill somebody wrote to me i mean i had 500 replies on that but funny thing is one person said i bought saw this very same book last week at a garage sale i was like yes my span has now gone from goodwill to a garage sale Thanks, God. When that book came out, how did I market and sell it? Just like I did all of mine. Give them away. Every day I'd leave my home in New York City and I would take five books with me, give them away. I didn't even know sometimes the people I gave them to. You know, you just never know. So all I'm saying, do you think they turned into business? Some of them did. So open and, and remember, you might think this woman is like, she'll talk to anyone. Now I will. But I used to be very introverted. I still am. I like to get my energy with my private time. But I know that when I go out, I want to be open. I want to receive information. I want to learn from other people. Now, the third way is it can be subconscious. Like you're doing it, but you don't call it networking. Every generation now is a little different, but we're all people. And as much as you go back in time and everything, people still connect we still learn the same way learn when i say auditory visual kinesthetic we all know if we're a real driver in our you know that kind of personality bottom line if we're very analytical if we're more um you know amiable with people whatever our style is we have to be able to cross all these divisions and we have to understand that the person that we're connecting with at that time may be different than we are and if we want to connect we have to be, sometimes we have to understand that maybe we have to change our communication a little for that interaction. I'm not saying change who you are, but I'm saying you have to be able to be flexible. There's a great line, praise be those that are flexible. You will never be bent out of shape if you go in the flow. So just know that and think about the fact, I remember going back to my alma mater in St. Louis, Washington University, and I would talk to kids graduating on just like I did at Baruch College for 12 years, I would go every semester and talk to people like how to get jobs and how to connect and how to build your network now for the future. And as we know, many of us in business now know, oh, St. Louis, somebody's in St. Louis. Yes, Wash U, that was my school, is the idea that you can make these connections that could last a lifetime. I mean, every day we see it every day and i will let you know when i go back to st louis for sure so social this is another thing we all know social media is here to stay and it's how we put things out there i use it also to learn things about i learn and catch and think things about people every single day i learn about people's birthdays i learn about anniversaries and i have something in my information bank that you have on one of the handouts you will learn things about people over time that it's just so great that you can just sort of like log down. Like someone told me, they'll say, how did you know it was my birthday? Well, guess what? They know because you wrote it down. And I'm always a believer, no matter how sharp your mind is, it's still weaker than the palest ink. So I write things down and then I go right to my computer, my info bank, as I call it, and I put things into it. So social media, fantastic. All the different ones. I know everyone on this call is on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn. I joined LinkedIn in the first 100,000 people to ever join. I think it launched in uh, January of 2003. I think that was when it was because I joined then. And, you know, it's a lot later now. And so, of course, when they went public, I did. I just got a note saying they were going to go public, but I didn't get stock, but I did buy. And the key thing is LinkedIn has turned into our professional 
networking tool. And there's a great guy in New York City that I know he teaches people. And there are a lot of people who teach you how to learn, but make sure you're on there. Give people reviews, connect with people and do it in a positive way to learn about them. That's always the key. And then strategic introductions. You know what? Every single day, you think about your best clients, your contacts, your people, your, they, your strategies or uh, powers of influence. Always thinking about how you can introduce them to other people, but people will say, well, how can I think about how you wanna be remembered? Make it easy for someone to introduce you. You know, if we had a lot of time, we talk about also, how do you introduce yourself? What do you say about what you do that you can say it in seven words or less? When they want to know more, they will. But you want to be able to have other people introduce you, but make it easy for them. So always find out, how can I make it easy for you to introduce me? How, what would you like to know? People will say, because if it's too much work, they won't do it. Someone told me years ago, a great line, a confused mind always says no. So think about that. I've got more information on that, but we don't have time right now. Socializing, I don't have it on here, but I will tell you socializing is another thing I have now added to my S factor. So social, when you're out and about, just observe and listen. I belong to a walking group and, you know, think about all the networks I've made through that. I have also something in your hand. I don't think it's in this handout. I'm going to send you another handout, Leo, if people want it because there's so much more information, but it's like, People that you meet in just in everyday life, and, you're, and they again, it's not to sell them on your business or anything, but it's to learn. Maybe they'll become a resource for you. Maybe you'll become a source for them. So key thing, and always remember the style. When I say that, we all have a different style. We all, quote, communicate and connect a little bit differently. So I'm just going to say on this, think about this yourself. Are you an introvert or you're an extrovert? It's okay. As I said, I'm a learned extrovert however i'm basically introverted so when people say why well, i'd rather listen i say great so i would too even though i talk a lot listening is the key factor you will learn so much just by listening to people and think about what can you do to grow like i always say to people they'll say well what do i need to do differently you think yourself you'll know after every connection or meeting or if you go to an event what could I have done differently? Debrief afterwards. What could I have done differently to make a better connection? And some people we're not going to connect with. We're just going to say, hi, how are you? And move on. That's okay. Next slide. Okay, I said this already. The opposite of networking is not working. We know that. But the idea, and somebody just, it was so funny. A new friend of mine here in Sarasota um, actually came up to me at, we were both at a salon. And I heard this woman come up to me and say, the opposite of networking is not working. I did not know who this woman was, but she obviously knew my one of my books or something. And it turned out that she worked as a counterpart to my client at a company that you probably know now called UPS. When I worked with them, they were called Payne Weber. That was a long time ago. So you never know. So have your tagline, have your, have your mantra, if you will and whatever your brand name is. Okay, next one. Okay, so in person, I'm just gonna glance over this. I think Leo, you could just put them all down because I'm just gonna glance on that because it really goes through, yes, yeah, smile. The world is like a mirror. If you smile into it, it smiles back. If you frown into it, it returns that greeting too. So the key, th and I'm not talking about grinning everywhere you go because you know we do live in a crazy world. But be open, approachable, especially when you go to, quote, an event or anywhere. Just be open. And, you know, too many people don't realize that 55% of our communication is visual, our body language, the way we connect, the way we look. And, you know, have a prop, whatever it is, but just be you. Look the person in the eye. Key thing. Eyes are the windows of the souls. You're not staring, you know, at somebody, but you're connecting with them. We've all been in those situations where somebody is like this. They're on their phone, but they're talking to you. And, and you know, we can tell. No, you want to connect with people. Be open. Look them in the eye. This is a big one, the IRA formula. I was a Dale Carnegie instructor. I don't know if anyone ever heard that of that course before. The book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is when I worked in one in my second job. I worked for Avon. When Avon, not calling on door to door, I worked in their direct marketing business. 
and rose to be a director of marketing there. However, that was now called the internet. This is the olden days when people did direct mail that you still get sometimes. It was not called that J word if it was going to the right people. But my point is I went to Dale Carnegie too. And my father said, go there. You, it's great people skills. You'll learn how to present and speak. And that's the idea speaking in public, connect. And people who say to me, I don't like to speak in public. Every time you talk to one person, one person, you're speaking in public because that person possibly knows 250 people, if you think about it. And that's the power of influence there. But IRA is impression, repetition, association. How many of us remember people's names? People always say, oh, God, I forgot the name. So when you meet somebody, form an impression and then repeat their name, but not too many times. I can't stand it if somebody says my name like five times in a sentence, but maybe once at the beginning, middle and end. And then form an association. Whatever you do, I will tell you the key thing is remembering that people remember they if we had a group picture now and everybody looked for a, or their, themselves, that who that would be the first person they would look for in the picture because we remember us. We People, when they say our name, we love it. So how do you remember it? I write it down, of course, but I will always say, by the way, how do you spell your name? Now, there might be someone on the, on the call that's like, well, oh, my name's Rick. Well, I know somebody named Rick, R-I-C. So I would not want to make that mistake by putting K. I also have a client to this day. He always laughs when I send him a note. Scott, with one T, he says, you don't know how many times in the course of a day when I get emails, people are trying to change the way my parents gave me my name. So simple things, write things down and listen, be aware. Be aware of body language, so important. If you're walking up to people at a group, or anything, if their feet are facing towards each other, two and two, you don't want to connect. You don't want to interrupt. But if it's if their feet are like maybe going out, I'm not saying you're walking around looking at people's feet, but you kind of see who do I connect with. That means they would like someone else to come in. And so it's very positive, but just be aware of the way people are standing and how they, you know, put ourselves together. You know, Again, it's like giving a presentation. You're prepared, you walk in, whatever walking in is. That means even every time you leave your home, your apartment, anywhere you go, even the gym, anything, be aware and be open because you never know when a networking opportunity could happen. Be proactive. If you wait for someone else, you'll wait forever. I always say, so reach out to other people, be proactive, you be the initiator and be positive, right? So important. You know, a lot of people look like they, when they're going to an event or anything, they, like they're going to the guillotines, be open and be positive. And a little secret, if you're going, if anyone in here is going to go to an industry event or a, a meeting or a vendor, I always say, get in touch with the organizer of the group before and just be like, you know, our company is coming or we're coming to this event and I'm going to be there. I would love to connect with a few people. Will you be there and be nice to meet you in person? You'd be surprised how many people will be like, wow, they'll look for you or you'll connect with them. They'll be like, yeah, I remember I got an email from you. Do you want to go a step further? Send them a note and just say, it's so nice to take the time. You know, people say, well, how do I get their address? Believe me, you can find anything. If you look, you can find, you know, but at least you're doing it. So we said that be positive, look for common interests. I always say, learn things about people, admire, you know, observe them. You know, people can, will say, oh, I, I bet you're somebody who likes kooky glasses. Yeah, I do. Or things like that, or watches. Watch for things that you learn about people or where people connect. So what I have here on what I call my networking wheel you know, different boards that you might be on, um, things that you enjoy doing, hobbies, things like that. Do things that you enjoy and you'll connect with people. You find out a lot of times, maybe it's like when I was very involved with our Rotary here in Sarasota, we have so many, we have seven or eight of them and throughout Manatee, the whole area, but in your local cities, Rotary, International, you know, um, all the different types of, of organizations get involved whatever it is, whether it's your place of worship, also be involved on committees, do things. There's so much activity and get involved with your college alumni too. It's very key to do. 
again, things that a lot of people don't do, they're always saying, I mean, you know, sometimes people will just say, wow, there's so much to do. I can't do it all. You don't want to do it all right away. Break it down. Be strategic. Give yourself goals. I even have, and I'll send this to you, Leola, a networking checklist of not what is already in the list, but I call it my, it's a scorecard. So I put together things like activities that I will do. And again, modify according to you. Okay. Some people will be like, whoa, this is way too overwhelming. Do it the way you're going to do it. Don't go to three events in a week. Maybe go to one, you know, do something, take people like your clients, your contacts, friends, meet them for coffee, meet for lunch. I mean, just do things to be involved. Okay. Next one. How are we doing over here? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to go. So this is, again, I'm not going to go. I think I'll just glance when I say about this, be aware of everything. I've kind of said this 24 seven, have a plan and a goal. So if you're going to go to an event or anything and you all have the handout, and like I said, you can call or you can best way to reach me, by the way, two ways, LinkedIn and also email. I respond to everything or text. Um, it's the idea of have a plan and goal and then put it into action. Do your homework, be proactive, get involved, go global in your thinking, but be clear about what you do. Think about what you do without saying what your job is. I help, I teach, I create whatever it is. You know, there's so many different ways of explaining what you do because people don't really care what you do until you learn about what they do and how you can help them first. Yeah, that's how it works. Go ahead. The next one. Do we have another slide? <laughs> that was it. Is that it? I think it's coloring it. Sorry. Let me see. Oh, that's okay. Oh, no. It wants to do all that. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, we'll keep oh, going. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. How do you wish to be remembered? I always call you 20 second introduction. Now needs to be seven seconds. 20 seconds. It's like, you know, the microwave is it's kind of slow. People want it now fast. So just think, and we won't even go through this now, but think about yourself. How do you want people to remember you when you're not in the room? How do you want them to know? But it's more about, tell me more about you. Okay, so we can go. In fact, we can even move off this slide if we can. Go to the next page. I think we're getting down. Okay, focus on the impact. Make it brief. You know, I always say the three Bs. Be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. Go, move on. And then develop your introduction for different groups. Think about, don't give your title, but think about, the different industries or niches or areas that you either work in or want to work in and make it relevant. I always say, if you get somebody to say to you, tell me more, you've struck gold. But the thing is, I like to say to people, you tell me more. So keep going with that. Okay, doke. Okay, believe it. Yeah, that's it. You have to believe it yourself. Sometimes people don't believe what they're saying. But don't sell. Remember, it's not all about selling people. The, the business will come. Do you have to ask for the order down the road? But this is just connecting and meeting and developing the relationship first. And be happy. You don't want people to get what I call Migo. We, I used to see this when I teach presentation skills. If people in the audience, if somebody's presenting and the people are lost or not, understanding they'll develop Migo, which is, is my eyes glaze over. Now, if I was in a, a room with all of you, I would be able to tell that, okay? But I hope nobody's glazing over because we only cut this to an hour. Know when to use your intro and when not to. Know when to stop. Less is more. Leave them wanting to know more. That's the key. Always want them to know more and more and more. And um, I think we're going to, I think we're almost ready. And okay, we got some more. Yes, yeah, so... Okay, the five drivers, again, I've gone through these. I'm not going to go through them again because you have so much information. But if you go out today and start your networking and regenerate it starting today, meet at least one new person today or and then nurture at least three new pe three people in your current connections. And I always I like to call it my power of three, three a day of each of those things that you do. So three notes, do one if you can and just but do them. Who do you think? Key thing. Okay. So if we were in a workshop and we used to do this all the time, I would provide stamps. People had their note cards with them or we'd give them out. And I'd say, write a note to someone to say thank you. And people to this day over the years have said to me, that meant so much to me. And it can be someone in your personal life too. 
How many times have you said to your husband, wife, friend, partner, relative, anywhere, or close friend, thank you for helping me on this? It's gold. It's gold. Do it with sincerity, by the way, too. People see through glass if it isn't. So again, I'm a huge believer in the power of thank you, as you can imagine. And, you know, never wait, because again, we don't know what, what's going to happen in the next hour, as we know, right? And I think we keep going. Okay, oh, great. This is perfect. Every time you're connecting with people, it's what I call my circle, learn something about them. The only way we learn is by asking someone a question. What brought you here? Tell me, you know, about your business or tell me about this. Just something. Learn a little something. You have to have your ears tuned up. Give something. You might just say, oh, that's that's interesting. I'd love to be able to send this to you. I have an idea, you know, thought on this. Not Nothing with your product. It's more you're giving something or a piece of advice or give them a connection or something like that. But you learn first, you give, then you ask something to them. Like, you know, what's the best way for us to stay in touch? If, by the way, you've had some conversation. This is almost before you leave the connection. You know, what's the best way to stay in touch? What's your preferred method of communication? And, you know, people might be like, oh, don't send me anything or whatever. You know, they don't want you to start sending them a lot of stuff. But what they do want is if you just say in order to stay in touch. And there are going to be people that you're going to meet that's just going to be like, oh, it's so nice talking to you. Maybe we'll see each other at another event or best of luck to you and everything like that. You'll see all that in the networking checklist because you're not going to connect with every single person. And, and there's no time to do that. If you walk away from an event or a meeting and have met two to three people, learned something about them, connected with them and found a way to follow up, you know what? That starts the process because, you know, time factor also. Thank them, key thing. And then I always say, before I leave with somebody, I say, you know, before we uh, disconnect and everything, I'll give you a chance to talk to other people here. Nobody's ever going to say, no, I just want to stay with you. Don't leave me. You know, they're going to you know, be happy. You moved on. But you say, just, you know, you never know who you run into in life. How do I know if I'm speaking to somebody you might want to meet? This is gold. Why is it gold? Because now they're telling you the kind of, quote, clients or contacts or whatever they're looking for. And that doesn't, it can be anything. It could be a doctor that you go to. It could be a dentist. It could be anything. It is key. It's key because then you say, okay, I don't know. But you know what? Let me see who I might know or who I can connect you with. And it may not even be anyone. But then that afternoon, you're somewhere else and you connect with someone else and they're doing this. And you're like, you know what? I think the two of you should meet. That's the beauty of real networking. I'm telling you. And then follow up. Do the 24 7 30 event. Think of everything as a networking opportunity. If you do that, you will definitely be successful. I think my acronym is, is coming up next. Is it coming there, Leola? Okay. Icebreakers. I'm not going to go through all that right now because again, but just go in prepared when you're at the event. See, so many people think networking is the event. So I had to put that in there because it's important. But think about that in the event. What are you going to say? And there are so many great questions to ask people, like even funny things. You know, what do you do when you're not at work? You know, and, you know, or what is, you know, what's a hobby you have or things? What do you like for breakfast? I know it sounds crazy and kooky. Starts it going. And that's it. Dialogue and discussion idea generators, and then know when to walk away, know when to go again. And then following up, you'll see all of this, by the way, in your handout, because I broke it out into what do you do before, during, and after. So it's all there laid out. And the after is the most important. Okay, things like business cards. Somebody said to me, Andrea, you're old school. No one has cards anymore. I still have cards. I think they're great to have. They're like, a call. I don't give them out as much as I like to take other people's cards. And people say, do you have a card? Yes, I have several cards and I like to give them out. You know, they're nice. This one's purple, you know, and everything like that. I have several different ones on different things I do. So the idea of pen and paper, I always have the head with me. Breath mints, you know what, let's be real. You know, the thing is you want to be in hand sanitizer. We don't have COVID anywhere, I hope, right now. I never got COVID. I was one of the lucky ones. Can you believe it? 
and I've traveled to like 14 countries since COVID started. So, uh, I mean, since it all happened, but the thing is sanitize. You should do that anyway, no matter what, no card stamps and a magic marker for your name badge. Very often you go into a place, either you have your own, um, you know, and somebody said, why is the business card old school? I agree. I don't think they are, but to, I listen to lots of people in every generation and they say your, your new business card is this, the phone, they just put it in. I still like the card. I just came back from Asia and I've been to that part of the world a lot. And I will tell you there, it's a very strong ritual to always give your card almost like it's a treasure. So again, and then we maybe we'll do another workshop on just the art of the, like the whole thing. This, these things are so important. But I also order them from Vistaprint because I'm always ordering different ones. So um, magic markers. So if you don't have a name badge, you know, like a lot of people have their name tag. Oh, somebody there has e-cards and printed business. Maybe I need to talk to them. Um, is that um, you could just put your name and put it on the right side because when your eyes meet somebody, it connects to the right. So just, just little things to remember. Intangible, we talked about that. Great eye contact. Make sure your ears are tuned up. Some people need a checkup from the neck up. So I always say walk in with a great attitude wherever you're going. Handshake. Now, be careful of the handshake because... When you shake somebody's hand, it needs to be firm. However, also be my, somebody once broke my hand, you know, so you want to be careful that, you know, that you, but you don't want to have that little, um, women used to do this back in the olden days when I started in business. And um, it's interesting because you don't want to have that little dainty handshake. Someone once said to me, this great mentor said, I'm not going to hire you because you need to have a good handshake. And I learned that years ago. The other thing is in some religions too, People don't shake hands. So know and be mindful of that. There are parts of the there are parts of religion and parts of the world. We have to be careful. Now, turn off your phone and Blackberry. Yes, this is an old one. There's somebody's hoping they still had a Blackberry. I don't know where and how, but they did. But turn off any of your electronics when you're there. And think about all the time, the intangibles. Okay. -do. I think that's and then. Okay, things about, no things about overtime. So if you take a look at, at what I call my information bank, and it's in, it's after your checklist that you got another one, but the information bank is, is my name, most favorite handout that I gave you. Things that we learn about people over time. They don't always tell you, you learn about it or they tell you. It's about digging deeper so that when you go into the bank to make a deposit, like connect with someone, you know things, but you learn things. What kind of personality are they? What is there any advice they give? Things that you learn. One of my biggest clients for 30 years, I know that he likes to fly fish. Okay. He told me that once. And then years ago, I got, I saw something in the New York Post, dirt alert, and he and it said something about fly fishing. And I wrote him, I called him on the phone and I sent him the article. He was like, how did you know? You told me, but he forgot. He said, I tell people a lot of things they don't remember. So this is what this is, the inf your information bank. It's gold. So just think about that. What can you learn even about your current clients and prospects and circles of influence? What can you learn something new about somebody today just by observing, learning, talking to them? They may say, I'm going to this or it's my birthday or anniversary or something about their children. Take it all in, write it down. Okay, now those are conversation card starters for overtime. Okay, yeah, and, uh, what? Did you say something? Okay, oh my goodness. Hi, everyone. Now, I'm going to go through, I don't know if it's on there, but the information bank that I call it, is, is it up there, Leola? The oh, my, uh, I'm sorry, mine, mine turned off for a few minutes. I couldn't hear you, and then I think it froze. Okay. Um, I'm good now, so hopefully okay, so we're still connected. Yeah, and I hope everyone's still there. But if not, I hope everyone, I have what I call, I always like to end with what I call my networking acronym, okay? And it's in your handouts. But if you think about the word networking, N is think about the other person's needs, their name, and nurture your connections. E is about, it's an evolution, it's a process. Make sure your ears are tuned up and ready to go. Engage, execute the skills. Be empathetic, 
and have enthusiasm. Be open. You don't have to be jumping on the tables, but do it. T is talk less, listen more, trust. Without trust, nothing happens. People have to like, know, and trust you, or they won't do business with you. And it takes time. W, there's some work involved in all we're talking about. The only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Write notes. If you remember anything about me, remember that I'm always writing with a cool pen. Okay, O, everybody be organized. Create your own system of organization. Re re realize that every opportunity is an opportunity to learn, connect, be a resource. And I love to ask people open-ended, high-gain questions. So, oh, oh, Leola, tell me more about that. How'd you get started? How long have you been doing this? Ask questions, use the name. Are referrals, we want referrals. We want um, to build relationships. We want to stay on people's radar screen. But remember, everyone we connect with, it's a reflection on us too. So I'm very careful when I make introductions because if I introduce someone to someone else and that person doesn't follow up, it's a reflection on me. So we have to be careful. So re remember to build that relationship. My favorite letter is K, is knowledge is power only with execution. I remember teaching at Barnes and or giving a presentation at Barnes and Noble in New York City and a man was sitting there with his arms crossed and he said, Andrea, everything you talked about, I know. I said, fabulous, do you do it? He goes, no, I said, then you don't get any credit. It's one thing to know it, it's another thing to put it into action and kindness pays. Remember what my dad said, give without remembering, receive without forgetting. Take the initiative, become interested in other people, have integrity. There's another end because sometimes you have to say no. If you know, you can't do everything all at once. You have to be able to be strategic about this. And you can't refer everyone. You have to make sure that also you want to know that person, know that what they stand for in their business, et cetera. Last but not least, set goals for yourself. Give every day, grow, and know when to go. So I think we're pretty much on time, don't you? Oh, practice time over. <laughs> Good. Now, I don't know if anyone has a question, but if they do, well, or if they want to write to me or you, you did. Um, so I had four or five in there in the Q&A, and then I think my computer just kind of timed out. So yeah. let me... Um, Somebody want to know what E was. Engage, evolution, um, execute the skills, and use your ears and your eyes. Yeah, my screen is still a little messed up, but. We can also, um, um, and like I said, I can send you something too, you know, like another, like some information. And, and I okay. think everyone, does every, if, every, if people have my email or my LinkedIn, like either one, they can reach me if they want to ask me a question or anything like that. Okay, great. So do you see questions on your screen? Because I've somehow messed up my screen. Us, um, I don't see any questions. No, nothing in there. So, so. so if anyone has a question, it's it says in it's in your Q and A box. Someone said that they wrote one there. Yeah, yeah, I had it in the Q and A, but I have somehow. Um, okay, Ooh, I see it over here. Q and A. Okay. Oh, I see this. Okay, people. All right. Let's see here. If we walk into a big room and see everyone engaged in one on one, I feel out of place. I always say when there's then, you know what, sometimes go to somebody sitting by themselves could be private. They could be catching up. I'm trying to think there. OK, I, you know what I'm going to do is if it's OK with the people who ask these questions, if I can, I don't know, can, is it possible for me to go through these and, you know, virtual coffee? You know what I mean? Do we have to check in with them? Are we still good? Yeah, I would. That's one question. Yes, you want to. I always confirm because something could have happened or something like that. Um, and I cross refer. I, you know, it's it's hard to go through all these right now, but I will answer them all. How's that? And somebody wants to know what my email is. Do you have that, uh, Leola? Yeah, so I did have that yeah. uh, on the one of the last slides, even though I kind of I flipped through it. Yeah. A few of those too quick. Everybody will get a copy of all of the slides in this video presentation in their email. And I believe all the handouts as well. I think I had three or four of them that um, will go out to everybody as soon as we get the video presentation put back together. 
Okay, and someone I, I think has a question. When I go through these questions, um, which I think I, I'll be able to see, won't I? Even after we stop this, will I? The question, I don't know. Uh, yeah, my, my technology base isn't always fantastic. I know, we're kind, of, we're kind of doing, like, so I'm going to throw something out. If you asked a question, and maybe you could send an email to me, or, you know, and then I'll answer it and then it can go out. To, and then maybe, Leo, I can send it to you like a list of, and they can all go out to everybody. Okay. Yeah. And then somebody just said, if you could share your email, um, just even verbally yeah. one more time, then that might yeah. be helpful. So Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A, -E at, and then Nirenberg, my last name, which is Innocent Nancy, I-E-R-E-N-B-E-R-G, and then the word group. Dot com. Remember the two G's, Andrea at Nirenberg group com. And I do follow up. The whole thing is practice what you preach. So we never get enough time in these things, but that's, you know, it's normal. But if you picked up one tip, one idea, or more importantly, one aha, where you're like, yeah. And then go ask your colleagues and friends, what do you do? What can I do differently? The things like that. Perfect. Okay, I finally found I found your email written down, so I won't mess it up. But I'm going to type it into the chat box, to, uh, so that way everybody Good. will have it right now. Good. And people were calling in from all over. I'm so impressed. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. So it's just like it's so nice when you see people because it's there. We go, Andrea at NirenbergGroup.com. Good. And then make and sure I didn't put any typos in there. <laughs> they're just counting New York. See, all over, and I lived in New York City, but. I'm a girl that travels. I've been to 97 countries. So I will tell you everywhere you are. I, I just connected with someone when I was in, when I was in Southeast Asia. So again, keep in touch with me. Let me know where you are. Okay. And of course, New York so City. So just to let everybody know one more time, you will receive yes. a copy of the slides and this video and the handouts um, in your email. And I just put Andrea's email on there, but you will also have that in the handouts. So you can email her any of those questions that you had. There were seven in there, I believe. And most of them were very lengthy. So it, yeah. it might, yeah. that might take us another 45 minutes. So uh, yeah. just email those so, yeah. to Andrea. We'll get their yeah. answered for you. And that was a great one. If, if they could maybe shorten the question a little, only because, right, you know, and we'll get it. Yep, we'll get through that. Um, and like to thank everybody for attending our video presentation today. We will send you a survey to let you know what we can and us know what we can do to improve other than me messing up the slides and uh, other topics that you may be interested in. So once again, just thank you so much for attending and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Leola. It was a pleasure. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Good, thank you. Yes, I hope to see Usha in St. Louis too when I go back too. Good. Take care. We will connect. Okay. <laughs> Good. Take Thank care. Bye-bye.